All set. Right. Good evening, everyone. With the time being 6 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021, I will call this meeting of the Webster School Committee to order. As a reminder, there were changes that were issued by Governor Baker modifying open meeting law requirements due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And certain measures that were adopted during the state of emergency have been extended, including those allowing public bodies to conduct meetings in a virtual forum, as long as the public has access to the meeting. This meeting has been posted on the district website with a Zoom link allowing the public to join. And just another reminder, this meeting is being recorded, both audio and video, and will be posted on the district website before we get into things, just a quick note about the format of tonight's meeting. Um, it was our intent to go back to in-person meetings, which we did once. Um, and we learned after the fact that our audio equipment was not recording the meeting. So um, since then, we've been in the process of trying to get that repaired. And it sounds like we are halfway there. And um, the recording will happen, but we would not be able to broadcast our meeting um, live. So for that reason, we've decided to remain remote to um, enable maximum participation from the public. And when we're able to be in person again, we will um, do that. Um, and one other scheduling note before we get underway. Um, we are scheduled for a school committee meeting during February vacation. I believe the date is February 22nd. Um, so we're going to actually cancel that meeting. We're going to have one meeting in February on the second Tuesday of the month, and then we'll resume our normal schedule in March so that everybody can enjoy um, a much deserved rest during the vacation. So with all of that being said, uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the November 9th, 2021 meeting. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Navarada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? I can see he's joined us, but his mic is still on mute. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion carries. Um, and the next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Good evening, Dr. Gogan. You are muted, Dr. Gogan. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Sure. I'm um, doing two formats tonight because my internet is not stable. Um, so um, my apologies ahead of time. Um, I, can you hear me? Okay, I'll start with my personnel update. The new hires we've had are a long-term sub for ELA at Webster Middle School. That's Jared Lewis. We've also hired a per diem nurse to help our wonderful nurses out. Um, we are hiring Mon Monica Gothier uh, two days a week, and she's helping out as we look for our second COVID nurse. I'm pleased to report that uh, our nurses offices have been very busy and, and we are grateful for the additional nursing staffing help. Um, I would like to let you know that we have received some resignations from Ashley Carl, a para at Webster Middle School and Lauren Mahar, an ABA over at Webster Middle School. Our Open positions are listed in your school committee packet. We are diligently trying to fill those positions. Like many districts, we're finding it very difficult um, this time of the year to fill positions. But no, nevertheless, we are still interviewing. Um, I would like to also let you know that we have received the retirement of Gina O'Halloran. Dr. Gogan, you hit remote. You're muted, Dr. Gogan. I'm sorry, that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I hit remote. <laughs> sorry. Um, we have received the re retirement notifications from Gina O'Halloran. She's a, an ABA para over at um, Park Avenue and Linda Boiso, a paraprofessional over at Webster Middle School. Both of those retirements will be at the year end. 
um, and we're grateful for them for their hard work and dedication to our district. Um, as I move on from personnel, I'd like to let you know that we've been extremely busy with the MSBA uh, story of a building preparation. We will be live um, on video on December 8th at 10 a.m. to noon, uh, Bartlett High School, and our project has been uh, tapped by MSBA specifically because we are doing a renovation and showing that we are really looking at um, reducing costs and reusing and recycling the wonderful building that we have while meeting our educational needs. In your school committee packet, the link to sign up if you care to join um, that wonderful presentation is uh, right there. There are no costs. Dr. Gogan, we can't hear you. Can you now hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure where I cut off, but the MSBA story of a building um, is going to be a wonderful event. And so we hope that many of you can attend. The invitation has also been sent out to our selectmen and finance committee and uh, members of our community, and we'll send it out for our parents. We've been very busy um, with not only preparing for the story of a building, and I'm sure uh, Mrs. Perangeli is gonna detail some more of this, but we've had many, many meetings um, with re our designer regarding our HVAC systems and our landscaping um, and our special education location of our special ed um, classrooms. That was is particularly important because when we submit in December, where the special education classrooms are cannot move. Once uh, DESE approves them, um, they are set in stone. So uh, we had some meetings yesterday, um, some more meetings to take a look at the placement of our special education classrooms. Um, so I'm gonna stay on my phone. Other updates we have um, with the literacy reset, we have, uh, I'm sorry, we have uh, new coaching changes. We have two new coaches. Uh, one, her name is Emily Russin. She has not started yet. She'll be over at Webster Middle School and Alex Stout will be specifically for Park Avenue School. Um, our GLEAM monthly district leadership meeting occurred in November, November 17th, and their next one is December 8th. This team of teachers and administrators are really uh, learning more about the whole purpose of the literacy reset and uh, why we're doing it and what we're hoping to accomplish is a comprehensive district literacy plan at the end of this. Our Hill consultants had targeted presenting um, the results of the needs assessment mid-December. We recently received information that they need to push that back a bit. Um, our teachers um, have filled out surveys and um, participated in focus groups with um, the Hill consultants. We, are, we continue to work with our DESE SAUCE team and our early literacy um, Consultant Jean Wolf uh, is new to us. And so one of the challenges with the Literacy Reset is maintaining a fluid conversation and communication. So um, there are a lot of uh, cooks in the kitchen right now with that. And we wanna make sure that the communication um, stays fluid. So we're working hard to keep that line of communication uh, clean. So I know um, Director of Curriculum, Jill Chapdelaine and Director of Title I, Dr. Mackay have been working diligently with Hill and myself and the principals to keep that communication line flowing so there's no mixed messages to teachers. Uh, the ultimate goal of this literacy reset is to really support our teachers and really help them with using the research-based materials and being still being creative with their um, lesson plannings. So um, we're hoping that our teachers form uh, positive relationships with the Hill consultants that we have. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay. Um, we, um, 
have also been dealing with life in general over at the Webster Public School District. And uh, we spoke a little bit about this at the last um, school committee meeting. We have seen an increase in uh, student discipline issues and, and in, uh, issues with um, safety. Uh, we have a monthly collaborative meeting with our uh, WEA union leadership. And uh, we spoke at length and in detail about some of the concerns that teachers were bringing forward. And um, I um, asked the principals to come to this meeting. So we are teaming to address the issues of code of conduct and safety in all of our schools. Uh, one of the things that um, has resulted from that meeting were uh, student assemblies over at Bartlett High School. And I know that there were some student assemblies over at the Webster Middle School. Um, for parents that are listening, uh, we really need to keep the communication lines open with families uh, and, and look at uh, discipline as a teachable moment for students. And we need families with us as we um, help our students realize um, that misbehaving, there are other ways to um, conduct themselves. So we take safety very seriously and um, I just wanted to fill you in on that. Any questions on that before I move on? Um, I do wanna let you know that Dr. Mackay and I will be attending the case conference, um, case leadership, leadership conference um, next week. This conference, again, supports uh, the literacy work that we're doing and focuses on Title I programming. Um, so we will, be, we will be bringing back some um, information to our schools. Um, I was pleased to see many of our school committee members at the Webster Middle School National Junior Honor Society induction on November 10th and very pleased to see all the students who have earned that high honor um, through their hard work, wonderful citizenship and dedication to, um, uh, to others. Um, so uh, that was a wonderful night um, and I wanna thank everyone for attending and congratulate our students for that. Mr. Peranto and I have been working diligently um, with um, our contact in Spain on the Real Madrid grant that we received. This year, we have been awarded uh, 21,375 euros. We're not quite sure what that dollar amount will um, come in on. Uh, it is all contingent upon the exchange rate when we receive it. We expect to receive that sometime in December. Uh, today, Mr. Peranto and I uh, completed the very comprehensive budget form that they need over in Spain for Foundation, Foundation Mafre um, for this grant. And this year, we're looking at kind of building off of our program a little differently. We're looking at taking um, our L students once again and having um, them stay after school for extra support help and then go to uh, the Real Madrid either basketball or soccer um, program. Uh, we're looking at folding in some snack and possibly dinner and then transporting them home. We're also looking at um, adding some uh, wonderful trips into this program like taking the students to the um, Basketball Hall of Fame. So the goal of this program is really uh, self-esteem development and team building. So um, we're happy to be providing this again, and we wanna thank Mafre and Foundation Mafre um, for their wonderful grant that they have bestowed upon us. It is the season of holiday giving, and um, the It Starts at Home organization has provided um, and we'll be providing um, 50 students under the age of 14 um, holiday gifts. Our counselors have uh, been hard at work um, figuring out um, who the students in need are, and we have shared that. Um, so families will be contacted um, and they will be picking up gifts for their um, students prior to the holiday season. The competency determination um, for the class of 20 to 22 and students with IEPs have 
been complete. Uh, the competency determination is um, for students who were unable to take the MCAS assessments because they were canceled and the DESE Board of Education has approved a method of verifying the course level competencies. So Mr. Thomas and Mrs. Barris have been involved in verifying course completion for students who have earned um, their competency determinations. As your representative, I continue to attend both the CMC and the SWEC board meetings, which we had them both this week. And in your packet, I would like to share with you the CMC 2021 annual report and also the SWEC 2021 annual report along with the SWEC first quarter um, report that is in your packet. We are always trying to look at um, bringing funds into our district. Uh, and uh, back in the end of October, we applied for the Mass Grad Grant. Um, and Webster was recently awarded $20,000. And those funds will go directly towards the reengagement specialist salary. Um, so we're pleased to receive those additional funds into our district. On other good news, um, the Mass Step newsletter, which is a brand new newsletter coming out from DESE, um, which references um, the advanced manufacturing program that the adult education program does over at Bay Path, uh, that we were highlighted in this first edition, and that is also in your school committee packet. I want to give a shout out to the new director, uh, Jenna Gouin, and um, thank Bay Path again for letting us use their wonderful um, advanced manufacturing lab. And that program has been in its fifth year and doing very well. And then finally, I just want to um, remind everyone that it's Thanksgiving and um, we have the 101st Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, not parade, um, football game, where um, Bartlett Indians will play Southbridge Pioneers at 1015 at the Ray Street Memorial Athletic Field. This is a wonderful way to come out and show your Bartlett and Webster pride. Uh, tickets can be pre-purchased um, through the athletic director um, tomorrow before the game, $5 for students and seven for adults. Uh, the day of the game, they will be $10. Uh, we want to wish our Bartlett Indians the best, and um, we hope to see many of you there cheering them on. And finally, I just want to say um, it's been a very um, long year, <laughs> and I want to thank our teachers and our staff uh, for all their hard work and our students. You know, we are back in action and trying to aim for normal. Um, and everyone is giving 150%. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't um, thank everyone in our district for what they're putting forward every single day, uh, students included. Uh, it is, uh, everyone's tired and everyone has to dig a little deeper to um, stay calm. So we're looking forward to tomorrow's um, pep rally. And, uh, we are opening that up to outside visitors, um, but due to the increase in COVID, we're asking that the outside visitors continue to wear their masks and sign in for contact tracing. And that concludes my report with a happy Thanksgiving wish to everyone. And I apologize for my internet. That's okay. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? No? Okay. Well, thank you for that report. The next item on the agenda is the business manager report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangeli. Good evening. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, we'll jump right in with the school building committee update. I apologize for any duplication um, of reporting here. Um, as Dr. Gogan said, we met on November 17th. It was a Wednesday this month that we went. Typically, we meet on Thursdays, um, but we made some adjustments because of parent conference and conflicts. Um, and during that meeting, we spoke about um, the project being submitted. Uh, it is due to the MSBA on December 28th. So we have one last building committee before that submittal, which is on December 16th. Um, there was an expectation that the board, uh, the MSBA board would be voting on the plan in our 
uh, February meeting that they had, but we found out that it's been pushed off until March. So now we're not going to know the status from the MSBA until March. Um, so that pushes things a little bit later, but we still have um, until June 30th to um, get the information, to go to town for support and um, have some community forums and outreach about the project and what's that going to look like with some finer details for the community. So we're looking forward to that. Um, as Dr. Gogan stated that uh, we've been really focusing on since our last meeting on um, special education. Um, when we submit our plan to the MSBA, um, a big part of that plan is the special education programming. And that needs to be approved by the Department of Education, not the MSBA. So um, typically that information will go over. They'll evaluate all the special education rooms and make sure that um, they're spread out throughout the building. Um, and once that's approved, it cannot be changed. So it's important to make sure that we're comfortable with the layout, we're comfortable with all the classrooms. We've been getting feedback from the teachers um, coming in to take a look at it again. We've made some adjustments. The architect has gone back and done some more work and um, he will be bringing another um, draft to the building committee at our next scheduled meeting on December 16th. So it is definitely uh, moving along. We are fine tuning things. Um, we took a proactive approach. Um, we had somebody from conservation come and walk the grounds with us last week. Um, just to, or was that this week already? I, I'm losing my days. I think it was yesterday. It seems like a long week already. It was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a long time ago. Um, but it was yesterday. We walked the grounds and um, took a look at the areas that are going to be touched and um, if we're going to need to move any wetland areas or relocate anything um, just to make sure that they didn't see any heavy concerns as we start planning. So um, it was a good meeting and we felt good when we were done. It didn't seem like there was going to be too much of a heavy lift for us. There's only one area that we're going to be looking into a little further, um, but I think we are definitely moving in the right direction and it's really exciting and I look forward to really um, narrowing narrowing it down and having some good solid information that we can really start um, speaking to the public more and giving them more detailed information about the project. Um, is there any questions about the school building? No? Great. Um, next item is the Webster Middle School lighting. As you know, um, we had um, a grant for some lighting upgrades. They came in and they did, They were, I think they were working actually last meeting that we had. Um, they were over at the school working. Uh, they did what they could. Um, like everything else, they don't have all the equipment in. So they completed what they could complete and they tried to start with the heavy hit areas first until they ran out of products. So now we're just waiting, um, products back ordered and we're waiting for that to come in. And as soon as it comes in, they will come back and finish the project. But we're kind of in a holding pattern right now. Um, we do have until the end of December. So hopefully um, supplies will not be delayed too much. Um, they were hopeful they'd be getting them in before the end of the year. But, um, you know, everybody in the world is waiting for some kind of piece of equipment or something out there right now as the delays and supplies are impacting a lot of areas and this is one of them so we're just waiting and as soon as they can they'll come back and finish that project um, next item is the fy22 quarterly report in your packets you should have a budget um, i'm not going to go through the budget page by page uh, i think you would really enjoy it but um you know for for time and keeping the meeting moving um you know i, I will keep that excitement from you um, everything looks good for now. We are on track with everything. Uh, the area that I would point you to, which is a high area that we watch um, every year, is um, special education tuition. And um, it appears that we are in good shape. I mean, right now at the budget, if you look like look at it, it looks like there is a deficit, but we're really not in a deficit. Um, part of that tuition is offset by circuit breaker but we are required to take everything out of our budget and then do a journal at the end of the year. So that typically should run in a deficit, deficit and it should 
equal the amount that we planned on spending for our circuit breaker. So I believe we budgeted around 600,000 for that, 650 maybe, thousand. Um, and we are lower than that in deficit, which means that our tuitions are in good shape for this year. I mean, as we know, that can change on a dime. And I know that um, Ms. Barris does have um, some things in the queue, but um, right now I am not um, overly concerned about that unless we have some, um, you know, other real issues that come up. We, we always keep a close eye on that. So it's something that we're looking at. And does anybody have any questions on the FY22 budget? No, right. And then the next item is the FY23 budget. We are working through our budget process. Um, I've been meeting with building principals and instructional leadership teams, just talking about the budget process. Um, we have our scheduled meeting with our, with our buildings to go over um, each departmental budget. And we will be compiling that budget for you for your first meeting in January. So we are moving through the process. Um, days are flying by and I know we're going to be sitting there reviewing a budget with you in no time, but we are working on it. And then um, I don't have anything in other updates, just that we're plugging through. Things are, you know, running pretty smoothly in the business office on transportation, so I'm happy about that. And I just wanted to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and I hope everybody has a nice long weekend. Thank you very much, Mrs. Perangeli. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? All Thank right. You. Thanks. Hearing none, uh, the next item on the agenda is the principal's report. Good evening, Mrs. Parmley. Good evening. Hi, everybody. So I wanted to start tonight by just letting you know, as I know um, Dr. Gogan's already shared a little bit about it, that the Hill for Literacy, as you know, has been partnering with Webster um, with our implementation of our tier one instruction and at the other two schools that includes the GLEAM grant and you know we, we are very excited that we have a literacy consultant along with the other two schools who's been assigned to Park Avenue to coach model review data and to assist with that implementation to support our teachers and our coach will be providing um, support and feedback to our teachers, either one-on-one -on -one or through their office hours and through our CPTs. And we just concluded our needs assessment with all of our Park Avenue staff around our reading instruction. So we know that's gonna give us some good data and good information as we move forward. And at Park Avenue, we're also in our second year of the early grades literacy grant. Last year, we focused on our foundational skills as we talked about the, the science of reading. And this year we're concentrating on building capacity for our teacher leadership. And we will continue to work collaborative, collaboratively with both consultants as we look to improve instruction for all of our students. We just, as you know, just concluded trimester one or we'll be concluding it tomorrow. And we had our parent teacher conferences. They were very successful. We had approximately between 625 to 650 folks who participated in our conferences via phone, Zoom, or in person. So we, that was very successful. Um, we did get some great feedback from our families. So we were very encouraged by that. Our teachers did a terrific job um, going over important information about children's progress. And then we are bringing back an initiative we had before COVID, um, our COMPASS, which is our safe and supportive measure that we have here at Park Avenue. And it's an opportunity for students to be able to take a break from the room for five to six minutes and reset. Sometimes students struggle with the demands of the academic day, and it gives them an opportunity to come in and choose e either an active break or a quiet break. We have all different things that they can choose from like puzzles or um, a mini tramp. And we have a facilitator who's there and her main job is to build trusting relationships, to talk about what it means to be a kid of character, if they're struggling to process out with them. She also um, will be checking in with students in the classroom, giving them key breaks throughout the day teachers are choosing the students at this point that they feel like could use those breaks, but Compass is available for any student. If they could use that, um, they just call up to the facilitator and we provide that for them. We're taking data so that we know 
what students are getting and how it's um, how successful it's being as far as trends and patterns of when these breaks are needed and whether they need an active or quiet break. So the goal of this is, you know, when when children struggle and they begin to really need a break or a quiet spot, you know, sometimes children are overstimulated. Sometimes they just need to have a time to reset. We want to be able to provide that for them. The teachers have within their classroom kind of what we call a chill zone with just like a soft space with maybe some books. So if they need to do that right in the classroom, they can take that little break. And in our hallway, um, Gina Wojo has done a beautiful job creating a sensory path and also creating areas where students can go out and take a little break right there with, a, with an adult. And it has been really nice to see our kindergartners getting the breaks that they need. And so what it does is it helps reset them so that they're able to come back to class, ready to learn and to get back engaged in the business of learning. So we're you know, really looking forward to being able to get that back in motion. And our character trait for this month is gratitude, living with a grateful heart and what we say and what we do. And um, I got to tell you that the students have been trying to really display that character trait as they've moved throughout the building at recess and how they're treating each other and um, really proud of them. So happy Thanksgiving to any to everybody. And I didn't know if you had any questions for me. Thank you, Mrs. Parmley. Are there any questions from the committee? No. Well, thank you very much for your update and for, you know, the, it, very timely to have gratitude as our character trait for this month. So um, thank you for all the work that you all and your team are, are doing. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. The next, the next item on the agenda is the student representative update. Um, good evening, Colin. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I'm just going to keep it short. Um, so my first item is the football has their last game coming up on Thanksgiving against Southbridge at 10 a.m. at Memorial Field in Webster. That should be exciting. 101st uh, anniversary of this rivalry. Um, each grade had assemblies about behavior in the school, like Dr. Gogan talked about. Um, I thought they went very well. Um, uh, pr uh, Principal Thomas and uh, Ms. Nieves uh, a answered a lot of questions that the students had, and they got a lot of answers back, which I also thought was very well. Um, there was a film crew in Bartlett on Thursday working on producing a movie that shows the plan of the renovations for Bartlett. Um, Real it, uh, they took a lot of video on how the students use the school and how the new uh, improvements of the school are going to be used as well. I thought that was very cool. Uh, parent teacher conferences were last week, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. I thought those also went very smoothly. A lot of pa uh, parents sh uh, showed out. And um, the drama club had auditions for their murder on the menu on Thursday after school. And I hear they went very well and they're starting uh, rehearsing for the play, which should be good. Also, the freshman class had their movie night last night. They, um, I, I heard it went very well. A lot of people went and supported the freshman class, which is always amazing, supporting um, each other's classes. And Tomorrow, we have our pep rally for Thanksgiving to uh, finish off Spirit Week and support the football team uh, put on by the cheerleaders. Hopefully, uh, everyone participates in Color Day tomorrow. It's always a fun event. I look forward to it every year. Uh, and that is all I have. Any questions? Thanks, Colin. Any questions for Colin? I have uh, one. the chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Blake. No. I just wanted to know, do you know when the murder mystery is going to be? Do you know anything more about it? Is it going to be a dinner like it was a few years ago? Um, I believe it's going to be a dinner like it used to be. I do not know when it is, though. I can find that out from a couple people I know that are in it and in the drama club, though, for you, Mrs. Boyd. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Colin. And, yeah, Dr. Gogan? Colin, who is the Teacher Turkey Award going to? Oh, I. there was an announcement at the end of the day, but I did not hear it because it was very loud, but I believe it is Mr. Carney. 
I believe he did end up winning it. So that's I can't be, wait to see. That should be very funny. Sounds like a lot of fun stuff going on over at Bartlett. Well, to, Colin, thanks. Sorry, go ahead. It's a great way to end off the week going in the break. That's good. Glad to hear it. Well, wishing Bartlett the best of luck on Thursday and wishing you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for your update. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda under old business is the COVID protocols update. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, I did want to let you know that we held a meeting with um, the new Board of Health Director in person um, with our head nurse, Kathy Pepin, and Ms. Perangeli and myself. And she is a wonderful lady and working closely with us as our, we see not only our cases increase, but our close contacts increase. Our COVID numbers for last week were 13 students and three staff. But over the past week, um, there were 137 students sent home as identified close contacts through school um, settings. Most of those students were at the elementary and the middle school. So um, we're pleased that we have uh, put together the free mobile vaccination clinic coming into Webster. We're waiting for the link to send out to parents so they can pre-register. That would be on uh, November 30th. And again, December, the second shot on December 21st. Not only are the cases increasing in uh, our schools, they are also increasing in the town of Webster. Uh, the town of Webster just posted their weekly cases. There are 61 new cases, 80 active cases in town, 15 breakthrough cases, and they have 15 children under the age of 19 with COVID. So I'm not reporting this to alarm anyone. We are um, proceeding with you know all of our protocols. I just want um, the committee to be informed uh, that there that's a large number of students that have to be home and um, we're hoping that we don't see uh, an increase of cases over the holiday season. So hopefully this little break here will help us all. Help us all. Through the chair. Yes, Ms. Navarata. Dr. Gogan, is anyone, is everyone sent home who's identified as a close contact regardless of vaccination status or symptoms? No, if you're vaccinated, you're not sent home. So this, the people who are sent home as close contacts are non-vaccinated. If you are a close contact and you're vaccinated, you may be sent home if you have symptoms. Okay. Thank you. So that's why we're anxiously awaiting for this free mobile crisis um, vaccination clinic for students five through 12. I think that will help. Great. Thank you for your question, Ms. Navarata. Are there any other questions? No, okay. Well, thank you for the update, Dr. Gogan. And for all the, all the work that goes into not only the contact tracing, but trying to keep kids apart and, uh, you know, keep the, keeping their masks where they need to be. And, and I'm sure those, those calls to families are, are probably the least favorite thing on a long list of things to do on the part of the nurses and, and other folks that need to do that. So certainly can empathize with that. Um, the next item on the agenda under new business is the approval of a BCBA job description. That's a board certified behavior analyst. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, this is a new job description, even though we've had this position, uh, it, it was shared with our union as well. Um, there is a memo in your packet from director of student services. Um, with regards to the need for an additional BCBA staff, which is the next thing on the agenda. But we'd first like you to approve this BCBA um, job description. Great, thank you. Are there any questions or comments about this job description? 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve it as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Lori, could you pull the committee, please? Member Millett? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes. And the next item on the agenda is the approval of a BCBA position at Park Avenue Elementary School. As I stated, there is a memo from um, Ms. Barris. And Ms. Barris, I'm not sure if you wanted to add anything to that memo, but we do have a need for um, an additional um, position. And the funding for this position will come directly from uh, grants. That's correct. Good evening, everyone. Um, you know, I think in keeping with um, the uh, theme of safety and, you know, some of the challenges that our students are facing, you know, in this kind of post pandemic um, and, and current environment. Um, you know, we have seen an uptick in, um, in challenges for students from a social emotional perspective. And I think that's a big focus of um, not only what we want to do as a district, but you can see that, you know, it carrying out through um, you know, the theme for funding, you know, as, as we're seeing now. But um, we have seen a, a significant increase, not only in our student population um, for students on the autism spectrum, but also um, for students with social emotional disabilities. And with that, um, you know, when students do have behavioral concerns, our ability to evaluate, um, to follow those students, to um, make sure that we're maintaining um, behavior protocols and trying to reduce our incidence of incidents and also of physical restraints. Um, you know, we really feel at this po point in time, it's um, very timely that we ask for this position in order to support uh, the level of need that the district has. Um, so um, if anyone has any specific questions, I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions from the committee about what a BCBA is or, or how they would contribute to um, the behaviors in the milieu over at Park Avenue? No. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, BCBA position at Park Avenue Elementary School. So moved. Second. We have a motion and two enthusiastic seconds. Um, is there any further discussion? Lori, would you please pull the committee? Member Millett? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Motion passes, thank you. And uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of an interim dean of students position at Webster Middle School. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. As you know, we are searching for an interim assistant principal. Um, given the increased needs of our students, we are requesting hiring an interim dean given the number of students over at Webster Middle School. Uh, this will be covered with the FY23 budget. Um, and we're seeking your approval. And as we are planning, uh, I'm sorry, as we're planning the FY23 budget, we will be putting that in and this will be covered with the FY22 budget. Are there any questions or comments about this position for Dr. Gogan? Okay, well, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the interim dean of students position at Webster Middle School. So moved. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Laura, would you pull the committee, please? Member Millett? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the appointment of a school committee member to contract negotiations for the instructional assistance. 
I'll entertain a nomination, please. I make a motion to nominate Sheila Blythe. Second. There's a nomination and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Adamopoulos. Yes. Member Millette. Yes. Member Naparada. Yes. Member Blythe. Yes. Chair Siddiqui. Yes. Thank you, Member Blythe. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is the appointment of a school committee member to contract negotiations with the Webster Educators Association. I'll entertain a nomination. I would like to make a motion to nominate Nick Adamopoulos, please. Second. Okay. There is a nomination and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Lori, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparata? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millette? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Here's Siddiqui. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Adamopoulos. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the review, transfer, signing of warrants, bills, payroll, and vouchers. Ms. Carangeli, you'd like us to come in and sign, I presume? Yes, please, Ms. Millett. If you could come in and sign the warrant, I would appreciate it. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Lori, could you pull the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Millett? Yes. Member Adamopoulos? Yes. Chair Siddiqui? Yes. Good night, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.